So here we're looking at the schematic for my uh, Akai GX620. Um, some of you might have noticed that this actually says 625 on the picture here, but that's just because the, the, the schematic is exactly the same, only this is a much higher resolution version. Um, so, as mentioned in a previous video, I've already swapped out all of the transistors, um, and I wasn't going to do the uh, capacitors until I decided I changed my mind and I fancied having a go at it. Um, and I've counted that there's about 72 electrolytic capacitors that I'm going to change. So I've been through the schematic and I've circled all the ones that I'm going to swap out. And then I've tallied them down at the bottom here what value they are. And then over here I've re reduced it down a little bit. So for example, over here, you know, I've got a line here for uh, 10 UF. And I know it's UF because it actually says here that all capacitors in UF and I stated otherwise. So anyway, yeah, so that's two 10 UF, 10 UF 16 volts. But as you can see, um, we also have 10 UF 25 volts. So I've just reduced it down to ordering more of the uh, 10 slash 25. Ignore this here. Those ones are a bit special. They're the low leakage ones. They're marked on, they are marked on the schematic as low leakage. You might be able to see. Yeah, see this one here, how it's got LL in brackets. Don't know if you can make that out, but yeah, that stands for low leakage. Um, so those ones are a bit different. So there'll be another, there'll be a, a bit of a video put together of me doing this. This is the start of the video just to show that I'm uh, planning to do this. Um, so what I've ordered, I've ordered all the parts off, uh, off Mouser. Uh, the service is pretty good. And I've got all... Uh, um, audio grade one. So if I just do a quick view on one of these, for example, you'll see uh, audio grade, audio grade electrolytic capacitors. Whoops. Yeah, audio grade electrolytic capacitors. So yeah, so they'll do. I've gone with the brand Nichicon as well. They're generally well regarded. Um, and I've ordered a couple more on each line item than what I actually need as well, just in case I screw one up or you know there's a problem of some kind. I just feel like you're better off going over than under sort of thing. I will um, absolutely put uh, links to all these components in the description in case anyone's interested. Um, and yeah, I will put the full component list up. And then, yeah, hopefully it should, should all go smoothly. Um, the video will skip now to me with my soldering iron out, my desoldering iron, and my Akai GX620 in bits. So see you there. So I'm going to approach this in the same way that I did the transistors, which was that I actually left the board and everything inside the machine and took the bottom off and the back off. And that way then you can unsolder everything from underneath it and then just extract the components from within inside from through the back, just through, you know, with the back panel off. Um, yeah, really not a bad machine to work on, it seems so far. Right, so to get the bottom off couldn't be easy enough. You just need one of these, which is just a good old trusty Phillips screwdriver. Can't go wrong. Um, so this, these two feet come off just with a couple of screws and you've got these ones in the middle. This one actually has one missing here, but never mind. It obviously doesn't need it. Um, yeah, so we'll get them off. So there we are. That is the bottom of the preamp circuit board. I'll bring you in for a little look. So that's the, we'll get the back off next. Again, really simple, it's just screws. These feet need to come off first. What we're going to do now is cut to a scene where I've got the camera set up slightly differently and I have a soldering iron and I have some solder and I have a desoldering iron and a lot of patience. Okay, so we're about to kick off now. Um, 
So the way I'll approach this is I'll look at the schematic which I've got over there, find a capacitor number, find it on the board, desolder it, stick the new one in to make sure you get them back in the right way around, solder it back in, cross it off on there, put a little dot next to it on the circuit board like I did with the transistor so I know that it's one that's been done, and then move on to the next one and repeat, probably for the entire remainder of this evening. Okay, so quick update. I'm uh, about halfway through now. We've got a lovely tray full of old electrolytic capacitors. Oh, yeah, so I'm about to have a break now for a minute. You can... Don't know if you've anyone paid attention to what time it was before I made this update, but uh, yeah, it's been a while. Um, going well, though. Only one thing that <laughs> has been a bit of an inconvenience is my desoldering iron died. So I'm back to using one of these manual ones now. I'm having to hold the iron on and use this. But you know what? It's, it's working well for me. Another good trick with these, though, is uh, splash a bit of fresh solder on first because the, the fresh flux inside your solder will, um, will help. I mean, obviously, if you've got a flux pen, that's the ideal thing to splash a bit of flux on there, but I don't have one of them. So, yeah, the odd joint that I can see is a little bit dry. I've put a fresh bit of solder on first. Um, anyway, I'm about to have a cup of tea now. Okay, so I'm back after having a quick bit of toast and making yet another cup of tea. And I'm now about to tackle the remaining 30 uh, <laughs> electrolytic transistors. Transistors? Capacitors even.
I just wanted to chime in right now just to say that um, these are, these videos aren't the kind of thing that, you know, that I do regularly. The way I'm doing my camera and lighting and everything is really not professional. I'm in my kitchen using my kitchen lights, using my mobile phone, which is currently balanced on top of a cheese grater. So that's what kind of level we're at at the moment. So just, you know, excuse me for that. So here we are with it all running after successfully replacing 62 capacitors. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be 72, but if I paid more attention to the schematic, I would have realized that I didn't need to double up on all of the capacitors. So yeah, 62 in total. If you decide to do this yourself, highly recommend it. It's made a big difference, but just take your time. Um, yeah, you know, it, it probably took me, I think there oh, about five, five or six hours, um, but well worth it. Take your time, be methodical. Make sure you get everything in the right way around. And yeah, definitely, definitely worth doing. Um, unfortunately, the last video, um, last part of this video, my phone camera died, hence why it cut off all of a sudden there. So you haven't got all of the footage, unfortunately. Um, yeah, because my camera was off and I didn't even realise, so that is what it is, unfortunately. But yeah, all working, definitely worth doing. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out for my next video where I attempt to calibrate this thing. Something I've, I've come, done plenty of soldering before now, but never calibrated the tape deck before. So that'll be a learning thing for me as well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, keep an eye out for my next one. Cheers.